Well, surprise, surprise, everybody. Guess who finally figured out what a gooner is? This guy. I see you motherfuckers down there in the comments calling this a gooner channel. Well, you know what? Every single time I make a Forgotten Beauties video, I put out a post asking what y'all want. A Forgotten Beauties video or some other bullshit. And like fucking clockwork, y'all vote for the Forgotten Beauties every single time. So, who's the real gooner? Me, who is simply bestowing upon the masses what it is they demand, or the horny assholes at home that keep demanding this shit. Man, that's that's some kind of philosophy shit. Anyway, you guys know the deal by now. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time. If you enjoy the video, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that good stuff, and also check out the membership. Joining that shit means you get early access to all my videos and priority responses in the comments section. So, you know, help a brother out. Let's get started. Now, first up, we have Ghost from Dark Horse Comics, and really, guys, what... What the fuck is this? Like, honestly, when they were creating a concept for this character, what the fuck were they thinking? Was there a single idea that the writer of this story said no to? I feel like the answer to that question is no. So Ghost is born, she has a nice family and a nice father, and then her father gets murdered by this asshole guy, and the asshole marries her mother, and then becomes her new father, and then she forgets that she ever had the original father, so just thinks that this asshole father was her original father, and then aliens come down from the sky and restore her memory, which then gives her like, like this thing where she wants to fight the asshole father. But then also there was this infection that spread based on nano machines that has nothing to do with the fucking aliens. And that gave her superpowers which allow her to jump into other dimensions. And in these other dimensions she jumps into, there's this guy named Nemo who's like an imaginary friend of hers, but also like a demon that has absolutely no relation to the aliens or the nano machines. Like. What the fuck? Look, future writers, you're allowed to say no to an idea. You don't have to literally throw every single thing you think of at the wall to hope what sticks. This shit is fucking nuts. But having said that, that doesn't mean it's bad. It's pretty cool. I like the main character for, you know, more reasons than just the usual two, obviously. And her powers work pretty interestingly. Like I said before, she has the ability to jump into another dimension, which originally was like this dream world, but as she got older and worse and worse things happened to her, this dream world became more and more corrupted by her own psyche until it eventually became like a nightmare realm. And this guy Nemo that was her imaginary friend in this dream world that she used to jump into eventually got corrupted as well until he became like this evil demon. So now when she jumps into this other dimension, it's actually really dangerous for her to go there. So her power is technically like teleportation where she can jump into another dimension and then pop out of that dimension in any location she wants. And while she's in that dimension, time doesn't move forward. So time's like frozen. So it's a pretty cool power, but every time she uses it, it's super, super dangerous because you got this Nemo demon guy there ready to fuck her shit up. So overall, it's a pretty fucking crazy comic concept. I like it. I dig it. And also, because it's a Dark Horse comic, she has a couple of crossovers with Hellboy. And Hellboy being my favorite comic book character of all time, that's, that's a fucking bonus right there for me. So we have Giselle Villard from a comic called Mystic. You know, like sorcery and shit. But basically, Mystic takes place on this alternate planet on the other side of the universe that is in like a location that makes it very susceptible to having magic. So the whole planet's just filled with magic and on this planet there are seven guilds each guild specializing in a different type of magic and being led by a guild master who is like the greatest at that particular type of magic and absolutely none of this has anything to do with Giselle herself she doesn't actually give a shit about any of this magic stuff she's just kind of like a party girl fuck up who likes to drink and stay out all night and do all the party girl shit her sister Genevieve on the other hand is very well educated and loves studying magic and is like a very successful sorceress and she's up to be the next person to be the guild master of their particular guild. And during this sort of like initiation ceremony where Genevieve is supposed to go through this process of becoming the guild master and then going on to like lead her people into the future, a lot of shit ends up going down. I'm not going to sit here and explain all of it, but basically Genevieve doesn't get the shit that she's supposed to be getting. She doesn't get what she's due. Instead, that power goes to her very undeserving sister, Giselle. But not only does she get the power of the guild master of her guild that her sister was supposed to get, but she gets the power of all seven guild masters, basically becoming like the most powerful being on the entire planet and one of the strongest sorceresses in all of existence. So it's sort of like the whole Tony Stark, Doctor Strange thing where they're kind of shitty people and then they get this great power and then become better people. But unlike them who actually had to go through the process of earning that power and getting that character arc to become better people, it sort of just thrusted on Giselle and she doesn't deserve it at all. And the comic does this on purpose to play off of the trope of the bad girl that was really popular in the 90s. Basically in the 90s there was this whole slew of characters that came out that were called like bad girl characters. And basically 
basically they were chicks that acted exactly like dudes. They drank a lot. They were extremely over sexualized. Fucking anything that moves. They would fight. They were irresponsible. They were just not particularly good people. But for whatever reason, they were still heroes and they still had like that heart of gold. Mystic sets Giselle up in much the same way, but instead of saying, oh, she's a party girl that just happens to have a heart of gold and be a hero regardless of her party girl status, like most of these other characters, the comic actually argues that a person like that cannot be a hero. That all those bad girl traits that so many of these characters have had, and many of them I've talked about in previous lists, just can't have those traits and also be the hero that those comics claim those characters are. You have to get over these bad traits to become the heroic person you're meant to be. So in Mystic, Giselle starts off with this sort of bad girl archetype, and then when she has this massive power thrusted on her, she kind of sucks at it. She constantly fucks up. Like, she's just straight up trash as a hero. The story is about her having to force the change and force the character development in herself in order to live up to what she needs to do. Giselle basically shows what a person who has this kind of personality would really be like if you put them in a position of power and responsibility like a hero. Giselle's character is an attempt to take someone with all of these terrible traits and see how they would act if you suddenly just thrust all of this responsibility and power on someone who is truly undeserving of it. And the answer the comic comes to is one that we probably could all guess. She fucking sucks at it. The Magdalena from Top Cow, because of course it's another Top Cow character. Where do you think you are? And basically the Magdalena is, is she's, she's Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ever seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer? That, that's the Magdalena. I mean, there are differences, but both this series and Buffy the Vampire Slayer came out the exact same year. And they have a lot of similarities. Too many for me to just say that it was a coincidental. They both star chosen one type female characters that are controlled by a patriarchal structure of men who are expected to die very often in their fight against evil before that power is then transferred to another new female that will then also be controlled by this patriarchal structure. So if I were to basically stand here and explain the entire premise of the comic, it would sound very similar to Buffy the Vampire Slayer. The main difference here is what the stories are trying to say. For one, the Magdalena is far more religious in nature. Like the Magdalena herself is always someone who is a direct descendant of Mary Magdalene. They essentially are this chosen one that have this purpose because they have a little bit of the blood of Christ. Because in this version, Christ had sex with Mary Magdalene because they were married or whatever, and that created the Magdalena. Each of them wield the Spear of Destiny, which was used to stab Christ in the side when he was hanging from the cross. They have this cool little like light power they could shoot from their hand, which basically works as like Ghost Rider's penitent stare that burns the souls of the wicked, whoever the light touches. It's pretty cool. But the main difference between the Magdalene and Buffy the Vampire Slayer is that Buffy the Vampire Slayer has a very feminist leaning, whereas the Magdalena really doesn't. Because of the added context of religion in the Magdalena, it sort of gives this higher purpose than oneself sort of twist to the story that Buffy the Vampire Slayer just doesn't have. Also, Buffy doesn't look like this. So yeah, if you like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, check out the Magdalena. It's basically like a way more fucked up, darker version of that. Pretty cool shit. Last up for today, we have Terret from the series Terret, Witch of the Black Rose. And she's basically like a big titty Professor X. No. Really. Basically, in the world of Terra, there's humans and magical creatures. And humans and magical creatures don't get along. They really don't like each other. But specifically, the humans are really, really brutal towards the magical creatures. This makes Terra's sister, Raven Hex, basically become a magical supremacist or a magical being supremacist or like a witch supremacist. I don't know what you would call it. Basically, like a like a witch Magneto. So Terra becomes Professor X, Raven Hex becomes Magneto, and they basically fight a lot because Raven Hex wants to wipe out the humans and rule the entire planet with only magical beings, and Terra believes that they can live side by side. It's exactly the X-Men. It is the relationship between Professor X and Magneto. Just fucking take out mutants and replace them with witches. That's the story. But also, titties. Like, no joke. That's basically why you read this comic. Everybody's got big titties. Most of the pictures of the characters in these comics, I can't actually show you. I mean, I'm going to anyway, but I'm really not supposed to. You know, whole YouTube guidelines and shit. No, but seriously, there's 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 a lot of nudity in this comic. Now, unlike something like the Magdalena, which is clearly very similar to Buffy, but the Magdalena still has its own stuff that's very good on its own, I gotta tell you, Terra just isn't as good as most of the X-Men stories. Like, the relationship between Professor X and Magneto has been built up so well over the course of, I don't know, fucking since the 1960s. And by comparison, Terra is just clearly trying 
trying so hard to emulate that, but not doing as well as the best of those comics. So if you do like the X-Men comics and you like the general vibe, but also like the added benefit of giant titties, then, you know, check out Terrot. Just know it's not going to be quite as good as what it is clearly inspired by. But hey, you know, maybe, maybe the giant titties might make up for it, you know? Anyway, that's going to be all for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you do remember to like, wait, I already, I already did all that. I did all that at the beginning of the video. I'm not going to do that again. It's, it's cool. It's cool. See you guys next time and y'all be safe out there here.